What is up guys, welcome to another video and today we're back on Horizon 4 and today we are answering a very important question. What is better? All wheel drive or rear wheel drive? Now I actually asked you guys over on my community tab earlier what videos you want to see over about Horizon. That post is still going to be left up so if you have any uh, suggestions for what you want to see in upcoming videos make sure you go ahead and leave it down below. But this comment uh, just said why don't you compare all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. For those that don't know in Horizon 1 it was relatively well balanced in that game. There wasn't really a preference anywhere. Me personally I kind of preferred rear wheel drive in that game. In then Horizon 2 it was kind of a known thing that all wheel drive was quite you know overpowered and then in 3 you know all drive definitely had its it was definitely better in many ways but it was a lot more balanced in that game compared to two and obviously with horizon 4 now i'm coming out there's a lot of questions what you know is is real wheel drive better this time or is all wheel drive better this time we're going to go ahead and talk about it because obviously i've played a fair bit of this game now and i feel like i can give you know my insight on this so if you go over to my garage the first thing i'm going to say is that it's a bit more complicated now you know it's not just a simple question uh, is a rear wheel drive car better than an all wheel drive car? These cars feel so different. It's not like you can go over a, a you know, a, a field in a Sesto Elemento. That's just not going to work. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and scroll through, through some of the cars I've used and then show you guys exactly what I'm talking about as we're, you know, going along. First up, let's go ahead and talk about front engined rear wheel drive cars. So this 1M is, is, is a car that I've been using for quite a while. And you're going to find when you play Horizon, they have much more like individ individual tendencies. So this front engined rear wheel drive Beamer is very, very heavy, you know, the BMW, BMWs are known generally for being quite heavy. Um, the 1M is no exception. Obviously, it's a lighter car. It's not going to be as heavy, say, as an M3, but it's not it's going to be a feel as light as something, say, like a Z4. If we then go over to something like um, the DBS, the, uh, the James 1 um, uh, DBS, you're going to find that, that, yes, it's still heavy, but it's a lot more balanced. Obviously, it's a supercar. It's made to go a lot faster, and you can definitely tell it's a much more you know, potent machine, if that's the right way of saying it. Now, what I'm going to show you this is I'm going to go, hey, t take the D DVS out, go around a corner as fast as possible, show you the guys that, and I'm going to do the exact same thing in the 1M. You're going to see it's completely different. Basically, what I'm trying to say as a, as a total point is that each car is kind of more of an individual car now, as we're before, everything kind of merged into one. Each car genuinely feels different. Okay, so we're just outside the festival here. I'm going to literally stop at this festival sign and I'm just going to go around the corner and I'm just I'm just going to tell you what I'm seeing. Okay, so if we go ahead and go here, you can see there's a lot of wheel spin. Obviously, it's a, it's a heavy car. I'm pretty much like feathering the throttle completely and you can see that it's really quite composed. It's quite potent. It's not really getting its back end out. You know, there's not really much slip. You can still tell like there's a lot of weight in the car, but overall, it's not particularly moving around too much. Now let's go ahead and get in the 1M. And keep in mind, both of these cars are pretty much stuck. And trust me in a minute, this is all going to make sense. This is all going to tie into all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive. Right, so now going in the reverse order in this M uh, in this M1M, you can see immediately there's a lot more wheel spin. And I, again, I'm pretty much driving the exact same way I was, I was driving before. There's a lot more back-end action. And this is what I mean when I say that cars handle differently. You can see immediately that there is just the back end out came out again. Obviously it's a bit wet so that's going to make a bit more of a difference but it was wet before. It's just a lot more tail happy and it comes back to the point that it's less so about all wheel drive and rear wheel drive and even front wheel drive for that matter but it's more about specific cars. I think genuinely this time it comes to a bit more of a play style and finding the right car. So what I'm going to do it, go ahead and do now is get in my favourite car that I've been tuning over these past few days. I've been using a fair few cars obviously when you're off-roading you're going to want to use an all-wheel drive car, rear wheel drive cars aren't particularly going to be doing well. Um, you know there's a few exceptions to the rule. But I'm going to get in this um, R32 which I've been tuning for the past few days. Keep in mind this is all-wheel drive at the top of S1. This does not handle like an all-wheel drive car in the slightest. Hey, shout out to the, to the Living Walk Kit build video coming soon. Don't worry about it, it's happening. Let's go ahead Let's go ahead and do this event. We're right here at this event, it makes sense. Let's go ahead and go into this event. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So here we go, on the starting line, it starts like a normal all-wheel drive car. Now, um, it's gonna be a bit harder to show this, but I'm gonna try to do this my best. I feel like I'm on top gear right now, this is fucking weird. Right, so this car, as you can tell, it's obviously been tuned, it's obviously a bit lighter, everyone is absolutely all over the place right now, but, Ooh, Theo, fuck off. There, look, it's like literally losing the right end there. I did nothing more than just oversteer a bit. And look, it's sliding into that corner, buckling down in the brakes. Ooh, that's a very messy example of what I'm trying to show you. But you can see as it's getting his back end out. It's not understeering everywhere. Saying like Horizon 2, the car would have just understeered into a tree. 
I was actually getting oversteer in this car. And and a lot of that is down to what the R32 is. Obviously, the R32 is my favorite car. And I know that it's kind of, it has more of a rear wheel drive bias in the all wheel drive, you know, system. Uh, it's like 70% 70, uh, 70 of the power goes to the back, 30% goes to the front. You're going to notice a lot more quirks with cars in this game like that. And that is what I'm trying to say. You can definitely tell. I'm not sure whether the, whether it's just because of how they've had to redo the physics because of the seasons and stuff. I'm not sure what it is about it. But you can definitely feel that, you know, all that work they put into the cars and making them individual. It shines through a lot more now. And I think petrol heads generally are really going to appreciate their little quirks like that. Breaking into this corner there, you can see the back end. It kind of wanted to get out, but... The high cast system, which is what sorts out where the power goes, kind of kicked in as well. And it's it's genuinely that deep, honestly. It feels that deep to me. I go in cars like the Sesto Elemento, or I go into cars like the Senna, and you can tell they're all and out race cars. Then you go to something like a Golf R, which you've upgraded, and that can't really take the power the same like something like this can. Oh, I'm just gonna fucking finish second. Fuck you! But you can see what I mean, and I'm sorry if this isn't a bit too technical for some people's liking, but it genuinely, honestly, is feeling that way to me. And I've played a fair few hours of this game now. I'm like, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting into the game now. I'm, I'm not nowhere in near finished, but I've played a lot. It's really weird. Really, really weird, but I love it, and it's for someone like me who's a petrol head can really appreciate those types of things. I would say this is the most balanced it's been between all wheel drive and rear wheel drive in a Forza game, period. I think now the debate between all wheel drive and rear wheel drive is honestly completely gone more for a what car is better. And I think that's how it should be. I don't think this game is going to be a repeat of, say, Horizon 3 or 2, where you're all-wheel drive swapping everything. In fact, I think on longer tracks, where maybe there's a few more open straights and where, you know, you, you're not going to be taking in any low-end corners, I think rear-wheel drive could easily trump it. Overall, generally, it's really balanced in this game, and that is the main thing to take out of this video. So it was kind of a bit of a trick question, really, to start of this video. I kind of, I kind of knew coming into this that it wasn't going to be as simple as just picking a winner, because it is it, honestly this, cha this game has changed so much, and it even comes down to things like when you're playing in winter, you might want a rear-wheel drive car or a rear-wheel drive car depending on what you're doing, and then if you go into say summer, you might be more you know lenient to a rear-wheel drive car. It honestly really, really depends. And it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, a few months after launch, if there is a separate, you know, like, if, if there is one better than the other. But at least for now, in terms of where we are, you know, like, before launch, I've had the game for about four days or so. Oh, fucking shit. That is my opinion on all-wheel drive. And I'm, I might revisit this in the future. A bit more of a talky video as well, because there was a lot to explain. Um, but, over, you know, regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know what you think and from what you've seen and what I've tried to show you. Uh, I, do, I do understand this was a bit more of a talky video, because there was a lot of things to, to discuss. Uh, but with that being said, if you guys enjoyed, if you did, make sure you go ahead and hit the like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have an awesome day. Safe and peace.